to YBI, where we discuss ways and strategies on how to better your financial selves. Zion and Roman back in the building again. What's good? What's going on, my brother? Man, tired out here, man. It's tired. hard out here in these streets. It is tired. Father, it's been so rainy feel. out here. Oh, that's true. Yeah, that's yeah. true. You've been, you've been juggling all the things. All the things. Yeah, you, you know, it's uh, another man. carrying the, the shoulders on him. You know, you got to do it. You know, shout out to all the dads, you know, like, and the moms, you know, y'all are real ones too. But, you know, like, I feel like parenthood hits so much harder when you work in and, you know, you're trying to move and the kids are old enough to, you know, to want to do stuff. And then you go to work and then it's, it, it sucks because you're like, man, I'm at work and I got to do this work so I can't be on the phone and talking to my baby. And then I got to yeah. go home and then the baby wants to be with you, like, like I want to do stuff with you right now, and I want to do stuff with you until I go to sleep. And I'm like, dang, I gotta cook dinner, and I gotta do this, and we're going on vacation next week. So there's like, there's so much to do, but you also want to prioritize the child and you know how much spending time. And then I got two of them, so the so other it's one double. Be, <laughs> yeah, the other one want to be just right her. You know what I'm saying? Like, so yeah, it's hard out here in these streets. But shout out to parents, you know, <laughs> parents. Yeah, if you're going to have kids, bro, real talk, if you're going to have kids, do it young. Like, for real, for real. Like, get it, knock it out, because That's, in, like, you know, 10, 15 years, I'm going to be chilling. I'm going to let y'all do what y'all going to do, but I'm going to be chilling. Y'all going to be taking care of yourselves, and we're going to be good. We ain't yeah. there yet. Uh, I see maybe maybe three, maybe two, three, four years. Maybe we'll, we'll visit Before, that area. Bro, here's the thing. Your but, knees, bro. Your knees. I be out here. My daughter's like, "Yo, I need to. I want to go to uh, one of these playlands, right?" And the playland is real cool. And then she's like, "Yeah, I want to go up there." And I'm like, "Have fun." But yep. she's like, "Nah, I'm scared, Daddy. You come too." And I'm like, "All right, cool." So I go up there, and my knees, bro, they You're don't like, no, make creep. they that don't make creep. play things soft for adults, bro. Aww. So my knees be like. Freaking, and I'm like, you gotta, you gotta pad up, bro. You gotta come in there with the full gear on, the Man, shoulder pads, knee pads everything. shoulder pads. There are other kids in there. It. You gotta have a mask on because kids are gross. They be coughing on you and stuff. That's true. Like, hand sanitizer at the ready. Yeah, Anything really, really man. Like, hand sanitizer. Yeah, just go ahead, knock that out, bro. Just knock it out, and then you, you'll be done. And we can do all of the rest of the fun stuff, travel and all that. We gonna knock that out when I'm actually rich down the line. Years, you know, you're not wrong. You're not that's wrong. A long time. You're not wrong. But that's the thing is that this is the brokest that you ever gonna be though. So when you think about it, like I'm gonna just keep getting richer, which means that like down the line, I'm gonna have all the money for myself and for old girl to go on vacation rather than us than like saving for vacation right now. I'm like, that's we doing true. little vacations right now. I'm going that's big. I'm going big. Like down the line, I'm going big. Everywhere that I go is going to be overseas. Like, quit playing with me. Right All now, we're going, to, we're going to Texas. <laughs> like, so I like how you're trying to sell me. You, I like how you're just trying to sell me on having kids right now. This, this is what this whole yeah. episode's about. I don't know how That's it started out like this. This is going to be about Zion trying to sell me to have children. Me yeah, and my grandma bro, always try to do, do the same thing, and I was just like, Grandma, come on. We need to put a poll down in the bottom, like, should everyone have kids? And it should be like, yes or no. And it's just going to be like, yes or yes. Like, might as well just get it done now. Might as well. I mean, you'd be might surprised. Well, you'd be surprised. We got to have that episode. We got to do that episode. Yeah, we, we'll, I, we'll do that. We'll do we, that. Can, we can uh, uncover all the layers and why I think the way I do. I don't know, because I'm weird. Um, yeah. Hey, I... I I understand. I do. But then I did it and I was like, oh, this is kind of dope. And now I'm just tired. But actually, but, let's break real finance. We talk about, we, you know, I'm here on YBI. We talk about ways and strategies to grow yourself and your finances. And you know how much it actually costs an average to raise a child to 18 years old? It's like 300 grand. You're not going to do it with $300,000? Yeah. You're not going to do it with $300,000? Yeah. into a 529 plan and let these kids do their thing. Um, um, what are we talking about today? We're talking about crypto. <laughs> <laughs> so, what you really yeah, do is. Yeah. For your kids, you put all your money into Dogecoin and you send it up to the moon. We're not going to do that. We're um, we're not going to do that. So uh, that's what you do. With consult a financial advisor. Uh, <laughs> don't consult Roman on tips for your child's future. Uh, that ain't the move. We're not going to do that. Um, okay. But we're going to talk about crypto. We're, we're going to talk, talk about, about crypto, crypto for like five seconds, and then we're going to talk about kids some more. Yeah. So um, you talk about crypto, man. I don't know. Well, you know, this is just 2024 updates, and I feel like, you know, crypto is just a pretty hot thing in them streets. If you've yep. kind of paid attention to any kind of news lately, I guess, at least somewhere it's probably talked about it because it's having this nice little 
resurgence of a rally and nobody really quite knows why. So, I don't know, we're just about our opinions, our perspectives on it, our experiences with it, and maybe just how we feel about it right now. I, I think that's really how this episode's gonna go. It's gonna be nice, sweet, and probably a little quick one for us, and maybe not, we're gonna probably talk, talk about kids again for the next 30 minutes after that, and uh, get on with it. So, you know, Zion, what was probably, what do you think about crypto? What, what is your initiation, initiation, your initial thought of it, your opinion of it? What makes yeah, it so. I was a, a big crypto guy. Um, I'm not gonna say like I was like in there, in there when I first got started, but after we got started with YVI, I definitely started investing more into crypto. Um, the reason why I pulled out and I have yet to get back into it for like as much as I was, was just because of the volatility. Like it's so volatile and I so am down. not into that. Like I'm far more into let me throw my money at something that I know is going to continue to grow over time and not be so risky. Having kids and all of that, like I have to play that long game a little bit smarter. Um, but that's the same reason why I was in on like Rivian and I was in on um, Lucid and those types of companies that were up and coming and had amazing products but then their stock just kept going down because they were unable to meet the demand and i'm like my portfolio was going down not wholly because of that but because i'm watching that company go so far down i'm like the rest of my stocks are going up and this one keep going down so i'm like i gotta cut ties but i had to do the same thing when it came to crypto i was like I need to have a place that's far more secure for my money right now. But I think that crypto has a ton of upside and I have several examples of how upside has been working I, for people. I guess we should have started this out on what even crypto is. No, you know, that was, I mean, go back that was an initial, episode. We did crypto. Well, we, we did talk about crypto on the initial one, but I guess as a real, real quick update, cryptocurrency is just digital money, digital assets, different ways is blockchain technology. Of these different computers talking to themselves and just registering on one big huge ledger about what happens when and where and who owns what at what time um very quick roundabout way if you want a deeper depth you can go look at that last episode or if you want a deeper depth let us know maybe we can do another deep dive on crypto and web 3.0 and more kind of things in our outlook in the future if that things like that too later on yay that was very fast that was like a little drug yeah, commercial good game. Enough, da, 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 da. so Bust the crypto, rhymes over here. Oh. Crypto can be purchased, and um, we talked about in one of our former episodes. Like we, we use Coinbase. Uh, Coinbase. Coin, was, yeah, I think we went through how to use it, and kind of go mm-hmm. through that. Which I want to say that as insightful as we kind of were, um, for that one to really be the only kind of one of the only good ones left standing, I think is amazing. Um, as anyone might have known, just between. Sent SBF and FTX to Binance to a lot of the other just crypto firms over the last few years have pretty much crippled or had some bit fraud case or something and Coinbase has just been like, nope, we're good. We're going to do our thing and you know, nothing hopefully is going to come out about them. I really hope not. So, yeah, I hope not. you know, because that would just stuff like that. Come on now. <laughs> knock on some wood somewhere. Yeah, so um, Coinbase, I was a fan of Coinbase, and that's where I was doing my primary crypto exchanging. Um, I like Crypto Earn. Um, Crypto Earn is the way, or Coinbase Earn, I'm sorry. That's the way that you can get into the crypto market without actually having to spend some money. What you have to do is go in and take some test quizzes, and it's based off of the videos that they provide, and then they give you free crypto. So I think that I do that pretty consistently like every time they release something i'm going to go in learn about it and then get free crypto so that's what primarily is bolstering my stock right now or my account right now is just having free crypto and just letting that do its thing but the people that are around me um some are very heavily invested like we're talking like hundred thousand you know two hundred thousand in on crypto and what's interesting is i get text messages from them pretty consistently like yo i just made fifteen thousand dollars today and i lost twenty thousand yesterday though and i'm like see i can't deal with that bro <laughs> like my, the my emotional heart, roller coaster yeah like as soon as mine went up by a hundred dollars i was like sold <laughs> we're done here <laughs> i made, I made, some I made money. money i'm out i'm out i don't but, need nothing else but i think that brings up a very big kind of 
initial just thing about investing in general is like your risk tolerance and when, like when to get out and when it's time to just call it and that's just where your was and just being confident in your choice and doing that like that's just what we need to understand it's like just no right or wrong in that because at the end of the day your friend still lost that 10k and you still end up you at least made your 100 so yeah. it, it's you know it, but that's just the type of person yeah. that i am like when we go to was it you that I went to the casino with? I don't remember who I went to. I feel like we went to the casino in we might have went to like casino. a bunch of years ago, right? So we went to the casino yeah. and I went in with like $20, $50, whatever it was, and threw it into a machine. The machine spit back like 25. I put in 20 and I was like, we can go, bro. Like I did what I came I here time. for. Yeah. I came up. You know what I'm saying? You get free drinks. I came up. So uh-huh. that's just, I'm like, I'm not the, the person that wants to continually go back and back and back. And I'm like, I don't, I, if I came up, I feel pretty good. And I'm not trying to be greedy, but at the same time, like I just like the the fact that my money is growing. So when it comes to crypto, obviously anything is going to have some volatility. Like there is like my 401k yeah. account goes up and down, but at the same time, it doesn't go up and down at the same rate and it doesn't go up and down as much so pretty consistently i can see my account go up but when it comes to like the stock and or to crypto and i see my friend's account go i'm like no i I don't like that that's that's too much for me but where's your accounts what are your accounts looking like i mean i my whole thing i think even when we initially talked about it was is i would only expose up to five percent of my entire invested assets to crypto and i'm still in that realm i think right now it's actually like 4.8 or something like that it's not quite at like the five percent mark yet um but so it's it's still there um doing still pretty actually pretty well just because now it's just coming off this rally so i've just been consistently kind of kept it where it was or putting like a little bit in there here and there i've only really done bitcoin and ethereum i think i had a couple others at some point but i kind of let those fall to the wayside Coinbase also had um, like 5% interest on USDC. I can't remember it for a second, but that's just the dollar, kind of dollar for dollar format for kind of having their savings account, but in crypto form of a dollar instead of a normal actual dollar. So I was like, I might as well keep a couple hundred dollars in here and let that build 5% interest because it's going to do that anyway. Maybe buy a little Bitcoin here, a little Ether there. And so far that account's doing pretty well. I did sell off a couple other like small coins that I had that I think I got for free also from Coinbase Earn because they were up and I was like, might as well sell them and put them more towards more Bitcoin or Ethereum. But I kind of just been, I wanted to keep some money there because I always wanted to watch the market and kind of see what it was doing. And I didn't want to, if it did for some reason go up to $100,000 a coin or whatever, it was FOMO. I didn't want to be completely out of any of that wave. But it also wasn't money that I was gonna necessarily like miss if, if it did for some reason go to zero one day. I also would have been like, okay, that was an, a good learning experience and I learned from that and I'm not gonna do that again. Um, I don't know really what's going on with this rally. I think it has a couple things to do with it. I think it's just because I feel like one, crypto is like starting to get more, a little more mature with people who are trying to flush out some of the, the bad companies and we knew that this, that this would happen bad companies would get found out newer companies would come to shine or better companies would come to shine and what would also all oh, the 11 spot bitcoin uh, etfs that kind of came out some of them will thrive some of them will not um there but there is a happening coming up at the end of march early april so, and what that is is that they basically cuts how much you earn per mining that you kind of do for bitcoin so that'll affect the price it might cut it it depends on what's going to happen there. We don't know what's going to happen, but this rally kind of makes no sense. And I don't know. I think crypto is very highly speculative and very volatile. It's not something for the light of heart investor. And you really should only put money there if you really are afraid to lose it with almost every investment. Not financial advice, but I would I would say really my risk tolerance is 5%. So if your you know, account's at 100, if you've got 100 bucks invested, you can put five bucks of it towards crypto. I mean, I think that's fair, but you're also slightly more conservative like i am i mean i think that five percent is acceptable um, it's very it's very small it's like eh. yeah yeah it's acceptable and like you said like you don't want to necessarily miss a wave if there's going to be one at the same time as for me there's yeah. too much risk involved and i'm like it, i couldn't be it couldn't be me so you said that you're involved in bitcoin and ethereum which of those two yeah. was your best um your best maker right now Oh, I was just looking at the prices of them. 
Bitcoin's up 200% this year. Oh, not mine, but just overall. I don't, I probably, I guess because I've had it about it. Is, um, what do you just uh, While you're in there, check on Teller. T-E-L-L-O-R. Teller. Teller's the one that I have the screenshots from my guy that was like, yo, I made $15,000 today. And I'm not gonna I, say, I have no but... idea about how to... let's see. Um do, 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 do. No it doesn't all time it doesn't give me a percentage of all time kinda returns Ooh. on Coinbase. It just says it says a dollar amount but it doesn't give it like a percentage, which is kinda trash. I want a percentage. But I guess you can kinda yeah. So Teller is up five point eight two percent but Let's see. Like if we go back a year, yeah. If you look at this, oh man, I'll turn that off. Oh no. Let's see. That's the graph for Teller. And so I don't know see that about Teller. So we're talking about these things. Yeah. So um, what is Teller and the round? So I guess a little bit of what there's. I know there's coins. There's all coins. There's NFTs. There's something else. This is an Ethereum this token. Oh, Powered Ethereum token. Yeah. Um, there's also staking and not staking your crypto. I guess we can run through a few of those. Well, we'll count this, what they are. This one is up 638%. Which it one? went from $7 to $515. I mean, well, that's the, th- that's the thing with crypto. And you don't, you don't know what any of these are going to do or what they're going to I guess you might know if you're in the communities or nuts. the Reddit threads. Maybe you might get that word like, hey, this one's going to be the one. But mm-hmm. you never know. It's all a, it's, it's speculative and it's so volatile and it right. goes up and down. Um, I guess to go back to kind of what we were talking about before. Um, but NFTs are just smart contracts they're just basically ways to say like hey you own this digital or whatever it says you own this digital thing and on the blockchain yeah yeah yeah. it's just a basic fancy way of saying you own this portion of something via this contract and you paid this much for it just a virtual contract in a very complicated sense to dumb it down very simply yeah we need the dumb version (laughs) well i need the dumb version um Um, staking and unstaking staking is really just like Basically, when you, it's almost like you kind of give give your money to the a bank, but you let them hold on to it, and you let them use that money for investing or holding on to it. It basically stays in the network. So when you stake it, it's a little bit harder. For, it's not as liquidable. It's almost like you had a CD, and it's locked in at a guaranteed rate. You have to wait a few days. You have to pay a fee or whatever to get it out. Maybe something like that. It's kind of like that with crypto. You can you can stake you can stake ether. You can stake like Solana and some other ones. It usually earns interest when you do that, so it'll kind of balance out. Um, it doesn't sometimes it'll go up and down depending on the coin itself but usually it usually holds that value and you get paid out rewards in the standard version of that token which then will go up and down like the volatility of that price of that one i'm trying to think if there's any other kind of more basic ways of getting crypto can't really think of too much right now i am not a super crypto bro this is a very light version of uh the crypto niche we're kind of just going through the rally and a wave and kind of wanted to just open the conversation up also to our community too because we don't we're not super crypto. I really just keep some of it there just to be a part of it. It's kind of like I just diversify every part of my portfolio. To me, crypto is just one part of that diversification. Uh, I just get the free stuff. Which is still part of it, though. It's still, yeah, it's now, it's still mean, a little portion there. I just checked. There's cool. $55 in there, and I haven't and paid for any of that. So. And that's awesome. I'm rich. I don't know what y'all talking about. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm telling you, like, I, you just never know. You never know that I might, you might have got that little percentage of that one though that goes up super crazy. You just, I don't know. Yeah, it's really I like super gambling at a certain point. I don't even look at it. <laughs> I just I, leave it there. I'm telling you, I mean, this is not advice, but there's way more safer investments than crypto. We, we have no idea where it's going to go regulatory wise or anything like that. So do your research, trust your gut, really only open yourself up to as much risk as you want to. And yeah, sterling statements. What you got for them? <laughs> um, Sterling Statement for me is I've been on a wave of there's so many changes and transition. I'm in a big transitional season, and I think that it's um, imperative to keep a mindset of just do it scared. Um, I think that a lot of people run from 
like fear they run from the risk they run from the you know the challenge and i think that it's important to do it even if you're scared do it or attempt it and just know that you know even if you fail there's learning opportunities there's you know all that so um do it and i'm not telling you to do crypto um but i'm just saying do whatever it is that you're afraid to do get into it and um you know at, at the minimum you're going to learn something from it so do I, echo that. I echo that completely you can't grow unless you're in an uncomfortable situation and sometimes you got to break a few walls or what do you say you break some eggs and make an omelet or something like that but maybe not as violent i don't know um but you, you gotta you gotta sometimes break down some doors break some barriers get a little uncomfortable mm -hmm. it's gonna be worth mm -hmm. it at the end of the day so uh um, so it's all gonna be working oh worth it I'm worth like, work. it worth work it. it at the end of the day um yeah, so have some kids. It's gonna be worth it at the end of the day. Oh my scary. gosh, here we go. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> here we go. Um, yes, sir. I'm gonna get another dog. How about that? I'm gonna yeah, absolutely. Not. Absolutely. Not. Okay, wrap this up. User, oh, we didn't get to my Sterling statement, but you know whatever. It's oh cool. yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna no, actually, no, I'm just gonna echo what you statement. said. No, I'm just gonna echo what you said because what you said was just so poetic and just philosophical. <laughs> Wrap us up, man. Get us out of here. <laughs> Y'all know what it is, folks. We may be young. We might even be broke, but we are always investing. Till next time, y'all. Peace. Peace. Peace.